She's worse than Amber Heard. I mean that. Hey guys, it's Clay from Clear Critique. I just watched Stranger Things Season 4, or at least the first half that's been released, and would like to talk about it. Today I thought it'd be fun to focus on the absolute best and complete worst parts of these seven episodes. What was the highest high and the lowest low so far? I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and be sure to subscribe and comment with your own best and worst. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Here we go. I'm going to start with the negative because, well, it's funnier. But trust me, there's a big, juicy positive later on, so stay with it. Here is the worst aspect of the first half of this season. The bullies. That's not what I'm saying at all. Ugh. Oh, oh. Lord, give me strength. American media has so much trouble casting and writing bullies in a convincing way. Even in movies I like, I see this issue. It's silly, and season one of Stranger Things gave us not one, but two sets of these. Flying around with all the other little fairies, all happy and gay. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Yikes. Every time this show goes to the 80s bully trope, it regresses. It does a worse job than even the thing it's copying. So why even bother? <laughs> Sorry you can't cry to teacher today. You'll just have to cry to your daddy instead. I don't know whether it's trying too hard or not trying enough. It's so painful it defies explanation. Mrs. Gracie meant by historical. This is supposed to be about famous people? Also, is she wearing dentures as earrings? That's not what I'm saying at all. Her delivery reminds me of that, um, the hybrid episode from South Park. Good for you! Thanks! Thanks! <laughs> That's so bad! This is not something small, like, Elle being bullied, hiding it from Mike, her rage, her inability to use her powers to defend herself against bullies. That is a huge impetus for Elle's storyline in this season. Like, th this is really important stuff, and they're botching it so bad. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I, I can't. And it's such an easy thing to do. Like, writing a bully character, it's not hard. It's such an easy way to make us sympathize with your protagonist. Mr. Fibley's a <laughs> Look at this guy on the right. <laughs> he's just, he's having a blast. He loves it. These bully actors are terrible. That being said, they're also clearly being given zero or very little direction. He probably just pointed at the other bullies and just like, okay, you guys don't have any dialogue, but just now act really fucking jazzed that a girl fell on the ground. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Bigger, bigger, even more into it. Your character is just super into bullying. You, you love it. You fucking love it. I'm so sorry. Bro, that was awesome. <laughs> I hope Mr. Fibley's okay. <laughs> it's this is a Dark Man video. I'm, where's Sniper Wolf? <laughs> What's odd is that there's another bully later on that's much better. Not great, but he actually feels like a real person and an intimidating threat. But Angela and company and the sequences that surround them are the lead boots that season four wears as it first takes flight. Just. Cringe. You don't you don't like these bully actors either, do you? Does anyone have Photoshop? Can we Photoshop the cat and have have him play Angela? I know. Because he's probably a better actor. Probably has more experience. I have to get into this monster sequence because it is so good. This entire sequence made me wince and tighten my jaw more than any moment with Fredo Krueger over here. Ooh. Something I love about this is how acrobatic they made him. In the first season, they kind of made him like almost like an animal Mike Myers. When they bring it back in season four, they made him really feel like an animal and his speed, his aerodynamics made him so much more terrifying to me. The pedal shape on his face, they didn't really utilize it that well in the earlier seasons, but we get a close up of those pedals doing their work and who boy. Oh. 
I'm so happy they made Hopper, uh, Hopper again, if that makes any sense. They had to fix him after the, the dump they took on his character in season three. You're crazy! Crazy. His own. Jerry Scorpy! Just for clarification, just because I, I mean, just if, when you say date, just so that we're crystal clear about things. So yeah, Hopper. Confu yeah. Stop. Yeah, he's back with a vengeance in the season, which is nice to see, because that's, that's when Hopper is at his best. We have a rotating camera, which is nice, keeping everything together. They might have stitched that together in editing, but dynamic is the best word I can think of. Fucking love that. Yeah, bird's eye view, very nice. All the tracks you can see in the snow of all the people that have been fighting. Um, I don't know if that's just from this incident. I'm guessing it is, but it makes it look manic. These touches make it feel like an animal. And season one, when they first introduced it, they were using animals as a comparison. I think they described it like a bear or a shark. The way it's backing up, but then flaring out almost like, um, like a frilled lizard makes it feel more animalistic. It kind of grounds this creature in a way that we can understand. Hyper aggressive, but it also doesn't want to get hurt. Great example of a scene raising the stakes. Just when you think victory's at hand, they escalate. The fire's out, and a Demogorgon is strong enough to pull the doors open. Eh, that's an almost perfect scene. That's not what I'm saying at all. What do you guys think? What were the highs and lows of this new season so far? Let me know in the comments. Stay tuned for more Stranger Things content, as well as a review of the new Peaky Blinders season, and subscribe to support the channel. You can find me on Twitch, link below, which is where I record parts of these reviews. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.